By the late 1970s, San Francisco, known for its liberal politics and free love, had become the gay capital of the world. And in Harvey Milk, it even had America's first openly gay elected politician. And then everything changed. I was working in the hospital. Half of the patients that we were caring for were patients with AIDS. And when I would walk to and from work, I would just see it was... it was devastating. People were emaciated, that you would see them one week, you wouldn't see them the next week. People were losing tens, dozens, hundreds of people that they knew were, were dying or had died. It's easy to forget just how bad the HIV AIDS epidemic was in San Francisco. Over a 15 year period, thousands upon thousands of mainly gay men lost their lives to the disease until a treatment was finally found in 1996. 20 years later and quietly, another revolution is happening here. San Francisco is aiming to have zero, that's no new HIV diagnoses by 2020. Places like Strutz Clinic in the center of San Francisco's gay heartland in the Castro are at the forefront of the fight against HIV. One of the reasons we actually have a big glass storefront, uh, so you can actually see people who come in, you can see people who are going out. Uh, and the idea is that you, when you have that, you show that it's actually it's okay to come in here and to get tested. Um, you don't have to hide the fact that you actually got chlamydia. You don't have to hide the fact that you went to a sex party with 20 people. Um, we celebrate you for who you are. Part of the strategy here is to remove the stigma of getting tested, as early diagnosis of HIV means early drug treatment. But the big innovation here is pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, which can prevent those taking it from contracting HIV. The Director of Public Health in the city likens PrEP to the drug developments of the 1990s. Do you think PrEP is comparable in terms of I do think PrEP is comparable. Um, I think PrEP is this enormous breakthrough, not only in protecting against HIV, but improving the, the health and well-being of people. Because for the first time, they can have sex without being scared about contracting a potentially fatal disease. In San Francisco, new HIV diagnosis has fallen by 90% since the mid-90s. And for the last five years, it's fallen by 50% to 223 cases. Compare that to the rates in the UK for gay men that have been increasing until last year. Figures released yesterday show a 21% reduction in new HIV diagnosis in the UK, fueled by a 29% reduction in London. Clinics like London's Dean Street told Newsnight they've been copying what San Francisco has been doing, but there's one very obvious distinction. The difference between this clinic here in downtown Castro and any clinic in the UK is that here you can walk in and 90 minutes later you can walk out again with a free prescription of PrEP. That simply doesn't happen in the UK. The NHS is about to launch a trial on PrEP, but as it currently stands, PrEP is not available on the NHS. Many gay men so buy their PrEP, prep online, uh, but not everyone can afford to. Really the fact that it's not available to people in England free of charge is crazy. And it's, it's, not, uh, it's not right. So are these drugs changing attitudes towards HIV? It's, it's very open. People will be like, hey, do you want us to heat up? And you'll be like, what's your status? And they'll be like, oh, I'm negative, I'm on PrEP. Or someone will be like, I'm positive, undetectable, it's safe if you want to do it. I'm HIV positive, and so way back there was a real fear of anyone knowing because there was a big stigma associated with it. I think now it's viewed much more like any other chronic disease. But this new freedom has also led to concerns that PrEP could encourage riskier sexual behaviour. Do you think there's more condom than sex, do you think? Yes, it is. Especially around here, it is a lot of condom -less sex because people have a lot of trust on being on PrEP. So far, although trial show PrEP does result in more condom -less sex, there hasn't been a marked rise in STIs. But more research clearly needs to be done.
London is looking to copy San Francisco, but not everything is working here. HIV diagnoses is falling in the gay community, but just look at the rate of decline in white men. Among other ethnicities, it's falling much less quickly. People who find themselves homeless now make up nearly 15% of all HIV diagnoses in the city. It's 8am and 6th Street Harm Reduction Clinic in San Francisco's much less affluent Tenderloin area is preparing to open its doors. Everything here um, is part of either safe sex, safe smoking or safe injection and everything here uh, reduces the risk and transmission of HIV and Hepatitis C. But despite needle exchanges like this, the Getting to Zero initiative is not making the inroads it hoped for. We've seen a drastic decrease in new HIV transmissions amongst white gay men. Right? That was the first population we outreached to, that was the first visible population that was affected by HIV, and so they did massive amounts of outreach. And what happened was we left behind everyone else that was vulnerable to the disease. The goal of getting to zero is incredibly ambitious, and perhaps then it's inevitable that some groups will get there quicker than others. But even so, it's difficult to underplay how far San Francisco has come in tackling one of the most brutal viruses of the last half a century. If it can even get close to zero diagnoses by 2020, it will have represented a medical reversal almost without parallel. The Bay Area reporter each week during the darkest period of the AIDS epidemic had obituaries of everyone who, was, who had died of HIV in that week. In 1996, the epidemic just changed almost overnight, and there was this headline that read, no obituaries, and I think we're at a similar situation now is where we could get to a point where we would have a headline that said, there are no new HIV diagnoses this week, there are no HIV diagnoses this month, this year.